good morning everyone and thank you for joining me today. Um, I know for a lot of people this is a very strange experience doing these live stream classes and um, I'm getting a little bit more used to it. This is now the second week that I've been doing them um, and bit by bit it gets a little bit easier so don't worry if you struggled a bit to get it going today. Um, we're going to start this morning lying into a child's pose. So bringing your legs underneath you, big toes touching, preferably with the knees a bit wider. If you like the knees closed, you can do that. And then releasing yourself down onto the mat in front of you. Deep inhale through the nose. Deep exhale through the nose. Starting to regulate and control the breath by deepening and lengthening. And as you're in your child's pose, you'll notice how the front body is slightly compressed and so the air needs to move into the back of the rib cage. This is allowing the rib cage to feel as though it is expanding outwardly while your spine feels as though it's lengthening. From here, you're gonna stack your hands underneath your forehead, bringing one hand on top of the other, and resting your forehead down onto the hands. Allow the shoulders to open wide and with the chest to feel expansive. I'm going to turn your gaze inwardly and upwardly at the space between your eyebrows. The eyelids are closed, so this is an internal gaze. Thinking about what you are in need of today. Perhaps it's patience. Perhaps it's comfort. Maybe you're in need of courage or calm. Whatever it is, start to think about that feeling, creating a visual image of it, and placing that image into the space between the eyebrows. We'll take three rounds of Brahmari breath. This is the honeybee breath where you inhale through the nose and then you hum the breath out, keeping the lips lightly closed, but the jaw relaxed. Three rounds at your own pace. And then on your inhale breath, start to walk your hands back up. So they're still sitting onto the knees. Draw the knees tightly together, sitting into the heels. If you need to sit on a block or a cushion, you can place a cushion underneath your um, sitting bones. On the inhale breath, you're going to float the arms up to the sky. Taking a lovely deep breath as you lift up tall through the spine. 
As you inhale, draw the hands out into your cactus. And then bringing the hands behind the back, interlocking fingers as you roll the shoulder blades tightly together. Taking this into a rabbit pose by tucking the chin to the chest, rounding the head towards the floor, and then lifting your hips up, reaching the hands up and over. Stay very light on the neck and shoulders. As you exhale, sink the hips down, bring the arms out in front of you again. Walking both arms over to the right edge of your mat. And you can lightly hold onto the right wrist as you stretch through the side torso. Inhale, returning to the center, lengthen forward, and then over to the other side, lightly holding to the left wrist this time. Slide your hips back as you reach the shoulder forward, giving a nice stretch through that side body. On the inhale, bring the hands out in front of you again, lifting up onto knees. Open the knees just a little bit wider as you flow through cat-cow pose. Opening the chest in your cow, and then opening the back in your cat. Working into each part of the spine. So don't just work the middle back, but lifting the upper back and the lower back as well. Working into the areas around the spine. So the chest, the shoulders, the hips, the glutes. Flow with the breath. Inhale, coming back into your tabletop. Draw the knees just a little bit closer together. And we're going to lift up to stand on the knees, floating the arms up to the sky. Interlock the fingers above you, reaching your hands up tall. Leaning over to the right, push the hips out to the side. Inhaling to the center, over to the left. Inhaling to center. Bring the elbows out to the side in cactus. And then slide the hands behind the back, interlocking fingers. Roll the shoulder blades together. Taking this down into another round of your uh, rabbit pose. But really work into the core muscles this time to slowly lower the head with control, lifting the arms up. Make sure that the head is very light on the mat. Release the hips down as you bring your arms forward in front of you. And then threading the needle by sliding the right arm underneath the chest. Lifting onto the fingertips of the left hand. And you actively reach that right arm out to the side. All five fingernails in the mat. Inhale, bringing the hands out in front of you. And then taking it to the other side. Inhale to the center again, and then rounding the spine as you come back up into tabletop. Checking the alignment here. Working the wrists a little bit by turning the fingers to face out to the side, and then you can keep turning as far as is comfortable for you. So we're going to rock the weight forward a little bit, and then rock the weight back a little bit. Being mindful of what's happening with the wrist creases, don't overextend. It's a gentle moving forward, a gentle moving back. Press into the fingertips to help maintain a correct alignment. Let's come back to the center, turn the fingers to face forward, and then lift one hand, a little roll of the wrist, change the direction of the roll, other side, little roll of the wrist, change the direction of the roll. Facing hands a bit more forward, tucking the toes, 
Lifting your knees off the mat, hover here for a moment. Engage into the core muscle, and I'll start to push the hips further and further and further back, and then slowly start to curl the tailbone up to the sky, eventually coming into straightening those legs. We're gonna heel toe the feet a few times to work out the back of the, um, the hamstrings and the calf muscles. Lifting high onto the toe of the bent knee. We're working the front of the foot and the toe joints as well. You can turn the gaze underneath the arm from one side to the other. I like to turn towards my bent knee. You may want to go the other way, either is fine. Keep lifting the hips up and back to help straighten into the spine and open the chest. Bringing both heels down to the mat and then looking forward, taking little steps, keep the legs as straight as you can, walking to flat back at the front of your mat. Lift open through the heart, stick the tailbone back as you float the weight onto the balls of the feet. Let's exhale to forward fold. Lifting halfway up, undulating the spine, flat back, and then exhale a little bit deeper into your fold. Bend your knees deeply now, tuck the chin to the chest, and feel as though you're rolling up from the shoulders, that there's a coat hanger across the back of the shoulder blades, and it's pulling you up, so there's no strain in the lower back. Coming to stand into your Tadasana. Engage from the crown to the heel. On the inhale breath, float the arms to the sky. Exhale to forward fold. Inhale, lifting halfway up, hands to the shin bones as you push your head away from the heels. Exhale to drop the hands down, stepping right leg into lunge. Lower the hips as you open up through the heart. And then inhaling into plank. Float your body tall in your plank, very light into the hands and the feet. Let's drop knees, chest and chin, keeping the hips off the mat and wrapping the elbows in. Sliding forward into a low cobra, so hands off the mat for the first round. Exhale to release yourself back through bent knees into downward facing dog. Take a breath here. Make sure the neck feels relaxed. The shoulder blades are opening, pressing forefinger and thumb into the mat. On the inhale breath, you can float your right leg to the sky and then lightly stepping the foot forward between the hands into a lunge. Hips low, chest high. Let's inhale forward into flat back. Reach the head forward, balancing on the balls of the feet. Exhale to forward fold. Inhale, strong body as you lift all the way up, engaging into the bundas as you lift, and exhaling hands to heart. Inhale, arms up. Exhale to forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, stepping the left leg back into lunge. Sink your hips low, lift your chest high. Let's inhale into plank. And lowering knees, chest and chin. Inhale forward, a little bit higher with your cobra this time, pressing the hands to the floor, but make sure the back is lifting you up and not the arms. We'll release to the floor first, sliding hips to heels, tucking the toes, work the chest back as the hips lift up. Take the left leg to the sky, and then stepping it forward, into lunge. Sink the hips low, lift the chest high, 
and inhale forward, flat back. Exhale to forward fold. Strong body as you lift up tall, engage into the core, and exhaling hands to heart. Let's inhale, chair pose. Bend the knees, reach the arms up. And exhale to forward fold. Inhale, lifting halfway up. And you're gonna step or hop yourself into a plank or into a knees chest chin. So sorry, chaturanga or knees chest chin. Sliding down towards the mat, up dog or cobra. And back into downward facing dog. Breathe in your down dog. Connect into the bandhas, the pelvic floor, and the lower belly. On the inhale breath, taking the right leg to the sky and stepping the foot forward, Virabhadrasana A, Warrior One. So the back heel comes onto the mat and you float the arms up to the sky. Square your hips to the short edge of your mat. And you want to lift up out of the lower back so that you're not compressing into the lumbar. The feeling as though you're lifting as tall as you can. On the inhale breath, bring the hands out into cactus. And then use that space to draw the hands together behind the back, opening up through the heart. Inhale, lift. And then on the exhale, coming into Humble Warrior, folding to the inside of your thigh. Square the hips by pushing your left hip forward, the right hip back. Allow your head, neck, and shoulders to really relax. Avoid sitting on your top thigh. Try to come to the inside of the thigh. We're going to release the hands either side of that front foot and as you straighten the front leg, you'll step the back foot in just a little bit, squaring the hips off here. Let's lengthen the crown of the head forward and reaching the tailbone back. Press into both feet evenly and squeeze the thighs towards one another. If you have space, you can take it into a fold. If those hamstrings are tight, stay on the fingertips. You can even bring the hands onto the shin bone if that's more appropriate for you. You're going to inhale, lift halfway up, and then lightly step the back foot forward into flat back. As you exhale, forward fold. And then Utkatasana by bending the knees, reaching the arms up to the sky, chair pose. Watch what's happening in the lower back. Try not to arch it too much. On the exhale, forward fold to the floor. Inhale, lifting halfway up. Vinyasa of your choice. Walk, step or hop. Chaturanga or knees, chest, chin. Up dog or cobra. And downward facing dog. Sinking the heels down, keeping the heels behind the middle toes. It doesn't matter if they touch the floor or not. Externally rotate your inner thighs. Let's inhale the left leg to the sky. And then exhale, stepping forward, Virabhadrasana A, Warrior One. Back heel comes in, and then lifting the arm up. So you're facing the short edge of the mat. Push your right hip forward, your left hip back. Anchor through that back heel and feel how that allows the spine to lift up tall. On your inhale, opening into cactus. 
and then maintaining that space as you interlock the hands behind you. Roll the shoulder blades together. Inhale to lift and then exhale forward fold to the inside of the thigh, humble warrior. Keep the hips squaring off here. Push the right hip forward, the left hip back. release your hands to the uh, either side of that front foot, straightening the front leg as you step your back foot in just a little bit, squaring the hips, squaring the toes, lift onto the fingertips as you reach your head forward and your tailbone back. Squeeze the inner thighs and you can stay here for the full five breaths or if you've got the space you can slowly start to melt over that front leg. On the inhale breath, lifting up, step forward, flat back, open up the chest. Exhale to forward fold. So you want your feet uh, about hip distance, maybe just a little bit less. And you're going to bend the knees, lifting into Utkatasana. Lift into lower belly. Sink your hips nice and low, open up through the heart. We're going to bring the hands together at the heart and take this into a twisted chair pose. So the left elbow comes to the outer edge of your right thigh, rotating the chest open to that right side. Squeeze the knees into the midline without letting one knee pop further out than the other. Keep the knees in line with one another. Okay, this is where it's going to get a little bit tricky. Stay in your twist, look at your front big toes, and step your left foot back into a lunge. So you're now in your twisted lunge pose. You're making elbow to elbow alignment, so a straight arm with those uh, forearms, straight line with those forearms. If you have the space, you can try and get your arm a bit further to the outer edge of the leg, bringing the left hand down and the right arm up. From here, take it into a high lunge. So you're going to sweep the chest up, opening tall and then drop your back heel down warrior two turn around so I can face the camera so you're in your warrior two pose adjust the alignment of your feet if you need to front heel in line with the arch of the back foot on your exhale breath cartwheel the hands down and stepping back into plank. If you have the option of a vinyasa or coming back into a down dog and holding there. On your inhale breath, you're going to walk, step, or hop yourself into flat back at the front of the mat. Exhale to forward fold. Bending knees, reaching arms up, Utkatasana. And then taking it into the Prasarita variation, so hands together at the heart. You're going to twist now to bring right elbow to the outer edge of your left thigh. Set your hips low, check that the knees are still in line with one another. Look at your front big toes and lightly step your right foot back into lunge. You're very welcome to keep the hands exactly as they are. Or if you'd like to go a bit deeper, 
working your hand further to the outside of the knee and strengthening the other arm up. From here we come into high lunge. So you sweep the chest open. And then dropping the back heel down, warrior two. Exhale to cartwheel the hands down to the mat and step back down at facing dog. You're going to hold your down dog for five breaths or alternatively drop the knees to the floor for child's pose for five breaths. On your inhale breath, roll yourself forward into a plank pose. You're going to really engage into the core muscles, taking this into a side plank to the right side to begin. So you drop your heels to the right, coming onto the right hand. You stack the feet one in front of the other, or one on top of the other, or lift the leg up into a starfish. Slowly release yourself down, coming back to your plank. If you need to drop the knees for a few breaths, please feel free to do so. And then over to the other side. <clears throat> so drop the heels to the left, taking the right arm up. You can stack the feet one in front of the other, one on top of the other, or lifting into starfish. Release the foot down, come back into your plank, drop the knees if you need to, breathe deeply, and then lowering all the way down to the mat. Bring the hands under the forehead, and just take a few deep breaths here. On your inhale breath, you're going to lift up into a sphinx pose. So bringing the elbows underneath the shoulders. Middle fingers are parallel to one another, lining up with that elbow tip. Plant the hands into the mat and start to drag the elbows back towards you and feel how that's going to open up through the chest. Reach your toes way back so that the body is in an active lengthening position. We're focusing the energy into the chest center by drawing the shoulder blades together. One more breath. And then slowly releasing yourself back down. Bring your other hand on top and rest your forehead. Let your legs be soft and floppy, heels out, toes in. Inhaling to come back into the Sphinx Pose and we'll move this into the Half Frog. So you're now going to cross your right hand slightly in at an angle, bending into your left heel. Take your left um, hand back into the foot and slowly start to draw the heel in towards you. At the same time, 
you want to be able to lift up out of that right shoulder. So working into the quads and into a back bend as well. Maybe you can even hold onto the toe to bring the fingers facing forward and the elbow lifting up. This is a good foot stretch and ankle stretch. Slowly releasing from there and then coming to the other side. So you're going to lift up onto the left elbow, bending into the right leg and draw the right foot in. Try not to collapse into that front shoulder. Keep lifting up tall. Once there's a bit of space and fluidity into the thigh, you can start to lift the elbow and turn the fingers to face down. And then gently releasing from there. Come all the way back down onto the mat, hands underneath the shoulders, pushing into child's pose. We're not going to hold here for too long, just a few breaths as a restorative space after the half frog. And then back into downward facing dog. Down dog, we're going to hop forward into a malasana or a Buddha squat. So you come onto the toes, lift your hips as you bend your knee, gazing forward. Walk step or hop yourself to the outer edge of the hands so you're landing into a squat. You're going to bring the um, hands together, elbows to the insides of the knees, lifting up through the chest. Tuck the tailbone just a little bit and work the inner thighs a bit wider. Release the hands to the floor, lifting the hips up into a forward fold as you heel toe the feet hip distance wide. Lift open through the heart and then exhale to forward fold. Interlocking fingers around the big toes and yogic toe lock. Lift the hips up and exhale the head all the way towards the earth. Shoulders slightly away from the ears. The weight is on the front of the feet, light on your heels. So whether the knees are straight or bent is either way is fine, but you want to flick your tailbone up to the sky and lengthen the back of the neck. On the inhale breath, coming halfway up. And then bring the hands at the hips, pushing the hips back, reaching your head forward, tilting the weight onto the front of those, um, the balls of the feet again. Almost as though you could slide a piece of paper under the heel. Use the core muscles as you now stand all the way up. And then bringing hands together at the heart. On your inhale breath, you're going to float your left knee to your chest. Actively flex into this foot. Inhale to open the elbows into cactus. And now turn towards your inner thigh, drawing one elbow forward, one elbow back. The leg stays pointing forward, so it's not crossing the body. And this is our dancing Shiva pose. From here, extend the arms either side of you and now kick your foot to meet your back hand so that the palm is facing out and the thumb is lifting up. You're holding to the big toe side of the foot. Turn your gaze forward and now reach your front arm forward as you reach your back leg up and back. Whew. Balance is not so good today. Choose your drishti point, something to look at that's not going to move, the floor, the wall, 
and breathe into that space. Let's slowly return to center, draw the knee back up to the chest, and then engage the leg to lower the foot back down. Standing into a Tadasana, and your opposite knee feels a bit tight, you can just wiggle the knees a few times, relaxing it out. Bringing the hands together at the heart center again. On your inhale breath, float your right knee to your chest. Open the elbows into cactus. And then turn towards your inner thigh in a dancing shiva. Reach the hands out on the inhale breath. And then kick the back leg towards the back hand without turning the wrist of the back hand. Turn your gaze forward, and then lifting that leg up into Dancer. And slowly return from there. Hands of the heart, knee to the chest. And then extend that leg as you lower it back down to the mat. Standing into your Tadasana. Take a deep breath in and out. Let's inhale, arms to the sky. Exhale to forward fold. Inhale, walk, step or hop yourself back into a downward facing dog. On the inhale, breath taking right leg to the sky. And exhale the foot between the thumbs, warrior two. Cartwheeling left hand followed by right. Find your alignment here. Find the activation of both the left and right sides of the body. Let's inhale into reclining warrior. And then forward into Parasvakanasana, elbow to thigh. Sink your hips as low as is comfortable for you to go. You can keep the elbow on the thigh or bring the hand to the ankle or bring the hand to the mat. Inhale, back into warrior two. Straighten your front leg. The back foot, one heel, one toe. In that order, heel, toe. Reaching forward into trikonasana, bringing the hands to the shin, top arm up. If you can keep that torso lovely and long, then you can slowly start to release the hand further down the leg. Remember, this is a twisting pose primarily. It is not a forward fold. So you need to be able to get the rib cage open, reaching the spine long before you consider forward folding any deeper. On the inhale, breath, lift back up. Exhale to rebend. Cartwheel the hands to the inside of the foot. And we're going to take us into a second round of side plank pose. So this time, we're going to play with this a little bit. You're going to take hold of your front big toe with your right hand. Plant your left hand into the mat. Drop your left heel into the mat. And then float your knee up to your chest. If you've got the space, you can lengthen that leg up. Otherwise, keep knee to chest. From here, releasing back into plank and then lift with the core muscles, coming back into downward facing dog. Breathe deeply. We're going to take this into warrior two on the left side. 
So taking left leg up and stepping your foot forward, inhaling right arm followed by left. Virabhadrasana B. Keeping those inner thighs externally rotating here. Inhale, reclining. And then forward into Pasva. Moving stage by stage or stopping at the stage that you're in. And we inhale, coming back up, straighten the front leg, back foot, one heel, one toe, and then reaching forward for Trikonasana. So even if you know you can go quite deep in your trikonasana, start a little bit higher and then allow the body to open up bit by bit with no strain, no stress, taking your time to gradually work your way into a pose that you feel comfortable is a challenge but manageable space. On your inhale, lifting back up cartwheel the hands down and our last little sneaky side plank holding onto the big toe with your left fingers pressing into the right hand the right heel lift the knee up to the chest maybe straighten the leg to the sky from here release yourself back into your plank going to lift with the core, downward facing dog, and then walk step or hop yourself to sit on the mat. And come to lie down. Just take a moment here. We're not at the end of the practice yet. We'll just take a moment to regroup, to connect to your breath. Maybe you've lost Ujjayi along the way and you need to reconnect that. You can soften your bandhas here. Let the flow of energy and prana just swirl around the body unhindered. And when you are ready, you're going to take your right knee into your chest. Your left leg can stay straight or you can bend it depending on what works better for you. You're going to take the two middle fingers around the big toe and straighten the leg. So even if your leg doesn't go all the way straight, that's fine. You can keep it bent. If it goes a bit straighter, you can go for that. So wherever the stretch of your hamstring is, that's absolutely perfect. Either you're going to work on straightening the leg, or if the leg is straight, you're going to work on drawing the foot a bit closer towards the face. Bring your left hand onto your left hip. Push your hip down as you open the leg out to the right side. So this is as much about anchoring the left hip bone, working those core muscles, as it is about stretching the adductor, the inner thigh. On your inhale breath, bring the leg back up. You're going to switch your hand around to now hold the, uh, the left hand onto the baby toe side of the foot, right arm out. So again, if the knee is bent, that's absolutely fine. Then keep it bent here. If it can straighten, that's great as well. 
taking us down into a half twist. So just halfway down. And you'll feel where you want to stop because everyone's glutes are um, shaped a bit differently. But basically you're aiming to have a stretch somewhere along this outer hip glute area. You might feel it in the back of the hamstrings if you're very tight in your hamstrings. And then on the next breath, you take it all the way into the full twist. So you're dropping the foot as far over to the left as you can. Try to keep the right shoulder grounded. This is a lovely twist for the spine, working the hips, the hamstrings opening into the top of the chest as well, so the whole body is getting benefit here. Try to soften as much as you can, bring a bit of yin activation into this. Instead of forcing the body down into the twist, kind of surrender into the space. Okay, to inhale, draw the leg back up, bring your hands next to the hips, point your toe, engage into lower belly, and we're gonna lower for a count of 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Dropping the leg all the way back down to the mat. If your hips have come out of place, just square them off again. And this time we'll take the left knee into the chest. Give it a nice squeeze down towards the ribcage. And then holding onto your big toe with your two middle fingers and thumb and straightening the leg as much as works for you. So if the knee is bent, you spend these breath, these next five breaths straightening the leg as best you can. If the leg is straight, you start to work the foot a bit closer towards the face. Bringing your right hand firmly onto that right hip. Anchor your right hip down as you open the leg out to the left side. Inhale to lift back up, switch the hands around, left arm out to the side in a T, coming into the half twist. Find a space where your glute catches. And for most people, this is quite an intense activation of that glute muscle. Take it into the full twist now, slowly bringing the leg all the way towards the earth. Doesn't matter if it doesn't touch completely, just as best you can. And then working into that space of surrender. Inhale, take the leg back up, hands down, point the toes, square the hips, engage into the lower belly and lowering 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Dropping all the way down, bending into both knees. Now flatten from the back of the skull right down to the base of the spine. Little gentle roll from one side to the other. Massage up either side of your spine, either side of the hips. Taking it into a figure of four. 
right heel to left knee. You can hold the back of the thigh or you can hold onto the shin. As long as your head is relaxed, your neck is relaxed and breathing into those glute muscles. Switching to the other side. Holding to the back of the right thigh or to the shin. from there. Both knees back into the chest one last time. And then extending the legs one at a time to the corners of your mat. Lengthen into the lower back, draw the shoulder blades slightly together, make sure the feet are spread evenly. Taking your two middle fingers and running up along the back of the neck, Hooking into the back of the skull, slightly lifting your head as you tuck the chin in and then release the head back to the mat. Take your thumbs to the inside of the eyebrows and you're going to run over the top of the eyebrows into the temples, little massage. Coming back to the middle of the eyebrows, lift up above the eyebrows this time and into the temples, back to the middle, lifting one line higher again, into the temples, one more time working right up to the hairline and down the side into the temples. And then draw the thumbs down into the TMJ between the upper and lower jaw. And then from there, gently releasing the hands to the mat. You're going to hold lightly into your Shavasana, eyes softly closed, allowing your breath to soften. Slowly start to deepen and lengthen your breath. Feeling your belly rise and fall.
gently running your thumb over each fingertip. Feeling the temperature and texture of your skin. Wiggling your toes. Rolling your ankles and your wrists. Coming into a full body stretch, bringing the legs together and the arms overhead. Yawning or sighing. Bending your knees. And then rolling onto your right side in a fetal position. Bracing your head to your upper arm. Just lying in stillness for a moment, feeling calm and secure. Maybe remembering what it was at the beginning of your practice that you were drawing in, what you were in need of. And noticing how at the end of our asana, we feel closer to that connection. Keeping your eyes closed as you lift yourself up into a seated position. Drawing your hands together at your heart. We'll close the class by chanting Om once and Shanti three times. Taking a deep breath in. your hands to your third eye. The light in me sees and honors the light in you. Lowering your hands to your lips, <coughs> to your heart, and to your mat. Bowing forward in recognition of your practice. Blinking eyes open, inhaling to lift.